Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. This is our uh, episode 12 of the True Boxing Podcast. I got my boy Melly on with me. And uh, this one, we're going to do like a year in review for 2022. Um, we're going to go pretty much by division. And then um, we're going to talk about, you know, what we got coming up in 2023, what me and Melly are excited about with uh, some of the fights going on. Um, we're going to dive into it, probably, probably be at it for a little bit here, but, um, we're going to jump right in and start with pretty much any division from 118 down. We're going to talk about like, uh, a new way, what he accomplished at Bantamweight and then, uh, maybe Estrada and Chocolatito. But, uh, where, where do you want to start with it, Mel? We can go ahead and wrap up 112 to 118 first. Okay. Later. Okay. okay. We just starting at 112. I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I think 112 would be perfect for a, a boxing super series, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but like 112, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. A lot of the excitement at 112 the year is gonna be depending on what Bam does. That's the star at 112. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so too. I think the whole point of him going to 112 was for him to go for undisputed. He didn't want to get in the brother way. So he just like you know what I'm gonna go down to one twelve. Uh, I think he, I think the first fight you go for, he need to go ahead and win the WBO, but then he need to go out to either Martinez or Edward, whoever, whoever, whatever one of those two. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think he kind of got a rude awakening. He, I think he kind of felt that uh, pressure uh, in his last fight of overlooking an opponent and got tested. And I think now he's going to be like super hyper focused um, going the, forward. I forgot, the other, so, I forgot what the WBA champion won to our name. Zachler, I forgot to say his name. Um, I've got his name. He fight on top. He be, he fighting on the arm, um, on the yard. Better be a car. He the other champion. I yeah. feel like I feel like another thing that helped him out too is one of the champions on top rank. He's not a big name. The other two champions are with are with UK promoter. It'd be easier to make those fight happen opposed to what they're with PBC and stuff. Yeah, one fifteen. Yeah. I think I'm I'm gonna be watching out for Nakatani. I think he did he the young lion. I mean, look, paying attention to it one to it at one fifteen, but. Escrata the man at one fifteen right now though. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think about the the final fight between uh, Estrada and Chocolatito? It was a pretty good fight. Pretty good fight. I think Escrata did another good W this time. Yeah, it was a little bit more clear, but um, it you was know, still close enough to where you can do a four fight though, and it wouldn't really be too many objections to it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I was um. Hey, you know, it wasn't like the barn burner we thought about. It was close enough. I definitely think you could see a part four. But, yeah, I think the right guy won. And um, Estrada, you know, moving forward is, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he tries to take over the division. I think, his, I think the WBC is going to allow him voluntary in the next fight. He basically can do whatever he wants in the next fight. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be that's gonna be interesting to see how but he, he been, approaches he talking it. Oh, He's been talking about fighting the Ioka Franco winner. Yeah, yeah. They're fighting, what, this weekend coming up, right? Yep. Yeah, that should be good. Should that's be good. good. That's a good fight to make. If I was that I'd pull up to that fight. Yeah. Yeah. But, if, but if the winner don't fight that squad, then the winner got to fight Nakatani. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, gonna be gonna be fun after it's tough after after you see like a trilogy like Estrada and Chocolatito and happen and to see what goes forward. My team gonna be interesting to see because the belt's gonna get vacated. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Inoue's already made it very clear he's moving up to 122 next. Yeah. So I feel like people just don't understand how good Inoue run with the 118, but he like he became undisputed and won the world by the Super Series in the same division. Well, and he destroyed pretty much those first then, two those bro, first two fighters thing, he beat. Those uh, first two fighters he beat in the quarterfinals and the semis, they were like former champs, dude. Those are legitimate hey, dudes, hey, and he wasted them in three you, rounds. Bro. That Rodriguez went his agent well. Yeah. Put the duty beat for the IBL belt. Emmanuel Rodriguez, he just beat on Gary Gary Russell, brother. Yeah. Yeah. That went agent well, especially if he, I think he's supposed to be fighting for the fake IBL belt. If he can win the IBL belt again, that's going that win is gonna age really well for anyway. Yeah, yeah, big time. And he's just he's not just beating guys, he's destroying them. I mean, the way he did the Donaire in the rematch was I feel, just, like that's wow. a, I feel like that's another thing that makes people not want to give him credit for some of the wins. In fact, 
I feel like for some fans, they give you more credit for wins if it was a tough win. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing is the first fight I really the first fight with Donaire in the, the World Boxing Super Series Finals, I think he was overlooking Donito, and that's why it was such a good fight, you know, in a close fight. My thing about but, that Donito, my the first in any way fight is well, like anytime people like do a hypothetical matchup with any way, that's the only fight they can point to where they fiend flaws. Yeah, and then I'll be like, if you're gonna keep talking about that first fight, then you got to look at the rematch. Well, and you got to look at the rematch because it pisses me off about people when they start coming in and saying Donaire was old, but Donaire was wasting fools, good fighters Bro, other Donaire ever beat, since that other fight. Donaire beat, lost the any way he won another belt and beat two young good fighters. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that, then, that's what I'm saying is. And then the fight after any way, that was supposed to be a, he was supposed to be a stepping stone in that fight for for some young dude. Yeah, was that? Uh, Yafai? Yafai? Kai, Kai Yafai something like or something? That. Yeah. Filipino dude, I think he, like, yeah. that, but he, 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 don't never supposed to be a stepping stone for the dude. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think it was two fourth round knockouts too. I don't even think yeah, he let those fights like go that long. Fast knockouts. He he had in a row going to the rematch. So it's not like don't don't never. Yes, yeah. don't never was older, but he was still fighting at the elite yeah. level. Well, and, and Donaire, the one thing I always say this about about older fighters that are great fighters, like their 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 good is better than and most then, guys' greats because then, they were great at one point. Look at even though Donaire was older, bro, he still was undefeated at one eighteen. Yeah, and one eighteen was always his best weight. You know, that was his best really? weight when he was when he was hey, coming he's up. trying to move down to one fifteen to fight that squad up. Yeah, and he could probably do it. That's what's funny. So that's a good fight too. I think that's a good fight. Yeah. All right, well, man. Well, we going well to uh, we're going to get back to a new way when we talk about uh, 122. But I want to start with the cruiserweight division. That's 200 pounds, man. We'll go through that one real quick. Um, did, I know that this division usually doesn't stand out too much in the American fight scene, but uh, did it? Did anything really jump out at you this year at cruiserweight? Um, Jay Opatia. Yeah. Him beating on um, Breida. That was a good win because Breida. I mean, cause really, for for a little for for really damn not like the last year and a half, Jay o, Jay Opatia, Okole, and Breeders been considered the cream of the crop. So, for him to be Breeders, that's a big win. I well, feel like a, yeah, I feel like cruiserweight is a lot like one fifty four, which I mean by that is those are from, those are competitive divisions. They just need names, like from, from, yeah. they just don't have big names. Well, well, cruiserweights always suffered from the fact that a lot of the guys are European fighters, mm -hmm. you know, and from, from, I mean, this has been going on since the days of David Hay, bro. You know I mean? Yep. It's just, it's just always been that way. That why, that's why that division suffers. But if you really pay attention to those divisions, man, even when they had the two world boxing super series tournaments, I mean, these guys, they, they, they put together some good ass fights and they're just, I feel like another just thing that made anyway. the the crew, the way Super Series even better was every champion and all the top dudes were yeah. willing to get into it. So you now you were really getting all the the top dudes yeah. fighting each other. Yeah, I think I think the cruiserweights probably put out the best overall tournaments because most of the most of the the division, the best fighters in the division, joined the tournament. So right. you you didn't have like that promotional bullshit, you know, where yeah, they didn't you know join because like there's certain every, promotion. Like basically, the eight dudes that joined were the top dudes in the division. Those were the top yeah. eight dudes in the division. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Opatia winning was a big win because he kind of came out of nowhere to I upset Brady. I think he needs to sign. Maybe he needs to get a different promoter. I think a good yeah. thing to do would be to sign with top rank. Yeah, because I mean, pretty much, there's really no promotional issue. The reason why I say that, the reason why I yeah. say that, another reason why that be smart is because top rank, top rank is basically its own promoter, but at the same time, it's basically like I'm putting a hop put it something. It's almost like the American broadcaster for Frank Warren promotion, also. Yeah. So, like, if a Corley sign with top rank, you can get some American fight, and if you let's say you decide to move up to heavyweight. Bro, Frank Warren got Daniel Dubois, Joe Jordan, and Tyson. You got some big yeah. fights you can like. Then I think I think about like Joe Jordan, the WBO interim champion, and Okorla the WBO cruiserweight champion. So if he decided to vacate and move up, that would mean Okorla versus Joe Jordan, and that's yeah. a good ass fight. Yeah, well, even even the state, even if he tries to clear up. 200 i don't think it would take much because one all these european dudes want to fight on espn and I yeah feel he's, like, he's got to get he's got to get away from eddie hearn bro he really does that's what i'm saying 
And the thing, I, I think another thing about it, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something else. I don't think these fighters be like you know how you know how they always say like like fighters don't be fighters be don't be checking out the lay of the land. Like you yeah. were just like you were just look the like fencing right. I remember when um when Zerto was talking about going to Cruiserweight to fight Makabu, I was like, bro, that's a smart idea. Yeah. If he would have like lose, he lost the bill, I would be like, bro, I would if I lost the bill, I would petition for that. Like, hey, petition to become Makabu's mandatory. Yeah. And then you be Makabu, you can put yourself right back in the play for big fights. Yeah, well, speaking of Makabu, he's got um, he's got Noel Gabor, who you know, if 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 you don't pay attention to cruiserweight the last few years, this dude, uh, you know, everybody made a big deal about Maris Braid as being the top guy, and he was. Maris Braid is one of the best cruiserweights of the last five six years, but people forget that in the quarterfinals of the first World Boxing Super Series tournament, that uh, uh Bradis chose to fight Gabor, and Gabor got robbed in that first round. He did. He got robbed in the first round of that tournament against Bradis, and that totally would have turned everything around. Finally, Gabor's going to get uh, his shot against Makabu. I, I think he's going to beat him too. I feel like he, if he can, if he can beat Makabu, he could put him back. He could put him right in position to get yeah. Jay Obatia or Bradis. I think it's good. Like I think Jay Obatia out with that job in your throat. If he can beat Makabu, hey, that's a good opportunity to call out Bradis for a rematch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and again, it, it it's not going to take much to see to see these guys, you know, get together. Like Arson Gulamirian's a solid ass undefeated. He's a WBA champ. He, you know, all these guys are going to be willing to fight each other. Um, I just I I I, I want to see Mashunu get back into it. I feel I like a Corley did missing out on him because he's going through with her, so he's missing out on a lot of those. Yeah, but he's getting his first defense. It's a mandatory against David Light on March 11th. So he's getting back into it. So hopefully he can get some of these other hey, guys to, to fight him. In that division so. too. He might wind up facing Makabu later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that too. How you think uh, Badu Jack and Kovalev at their older age yeah, are going to do? Saying, I've been noticing. I noticed like um, the Serdi Kovalev and Badu Jack in the WBC ring is one of those. They might have to wind up facing each other for mandatory, or might one or two might wind up facing Lockaboo. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't think either one of them at their age, bro. I think they're going to take too many shots and punishment. I just don't see them really doing much. But you never know, man. But yeah, Cruiserweight should be interesting if we can get some of these fights like Okoli on TV. But Okoli's also got to step up because in his one title defense against C.S. Locke uh, this year, it was just kind of like that workmanlike type defense. You know, he really didn't like uh, burn the house down and impress a lot of people. So, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens, man. But uh, I think we're good on on 200. You you got anything else to add on to that division? No, I ain't really yeah. too much to add on. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to move down to 130 pounds now, super featherweight. We get rolling in that division. Um, heading into the year, you know, you had that big showdown between Stevenson and Valdez, and Stevenson uh, really put it on Valdez. He he beat him pretty convincingly to unify belts, so that was impressive. But, you know, it was kind of a stop-through for Stevenson as he missed weight for the Kansai Chow fight, and now he's, mo now he's moving up to uh, lightweight. So 130 is kind of wide open again uh, um, for the taking. I said this, I said this like, um. Bro, one thirty is the most up for grab division in my opinion. Like, cause like that's a division like you got a definitive like I feel like, I feel like you got a definitive top five. It's Valdez, it's Robson, Hector Garcia, Chef, Kenny Cordini. You got a definitive top five. Yeah, but there is no definitive number one dude, and you got two vacant belts. Yeah, that division is wide open in my opinion. Plus, you got yeah. Ray Vargas and Navarrete moving up. That's another division who I feel 130. I feel like in the current state 130 in right now, a world by the Super Series would be perfect. Yeah, I agree with that too. It's just trying to get the promotions to work it out is going to be too tough because I feel like Bob Arum has been notorious to not have his guys in the World Boxing Super Series tournament, you know? And um, and the PBC has kind of really not let their guys compete in it too. So, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see if they can put that together. Um, I know that I know the World Box Super Series said they wanted to make a comeback. So yeah, see, I've seen that. I, I, what I seen, what I, I had seen, I had read something. They were saying like they want to bring it back next year, but they like the thing about the World Box Super Series is this is this not just a an American and UK term. This is a worldwide term. So it's like with yes. like 
every country COVID thing different. Yeah. So it's like it's difficult. Like, but one thirty, um, Shavkat and Cordina are gonna be able to good fight for the IBF. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. I think Shavkat's gonna beat him, but man, what a fight that was between Shavkat and uh, I really Robert think, Barrett, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really think if Cordina can beat Shavkat, he's gonna have a good argument for being the best one thirty pound. I'm I'm gonna be honest. Oh yeah, with you. yeah. Well I think you can make you can make a strong case for a lot of guys right now, but Shavkat, I mean that well I wanna talk about that fight with Zelfa Barrett, man. He he got up off the canvas, was losing on the scorecards and wore him down and stopped him. That was a good ass fight, man. Yeah, see Shavkat, yeah. he was Shavkat. Shavkat stylistically, he reminds me a lot of a fucking um Devonchenko. Yeah, yeah. Just he, just keep, he just keeps slugging, fight, man. A rough fighter who they're gonna meet. He just a hard fight. And and he's and he's young too. He's only twenty eight, man. So he's he got you know. That one's like him and when, if I think him and Cordina supposed to fight in April. The yeah. winner of that fight is gonna have a, a a very solid case of being the best one thirty pounder because. Yes. Even yeah, if Navarrete wins that belt, he he I I would really need to see how Navarrete look getting involved there, but he's not fighting Val that night. Yeah. Um but Shaka he's gonna Foster, fight Val there after that. He'll fight that Liam I think it's Liam Wilson and he'll yeah, probably win the belt. That's how and then he'll though. fight Valdez after that. And then you got um Shaggy Foster and Ray Vargas. That's another big fight. Who you got in that one? I had to go Ray Vargas in that fight, but Oshaki Foster this, this is the opportunity he's been looking for. Yeah. I'm actually going to pick Foster in that one. I think stylistically he's going to be like he I, feel, I think I'm he's like, going to beat him. The reason why I say Vargas is because I feel like the, he more experienced in the big fight. He fought better competition. But oh, he, he, at the same time, though, I can see why you say Foster. Yeah. Because Vargas never really fought nobody like Foster. Like yeah. somebody that's bigger, stronger. Faster and a switch hitter. That is, that's not a. I don't think you've ever fought a switch hitter. Before. Well, and for Var, and for Vargas, the the thing is, is he's kind of in a no lose situation in this because even if he loses, I he, he still correct. got the belt at one twenty six to hold on to. Oh, but Vargas isn't a big power puncher. He never has been. That's why for me, move to move up another weight class this fast. I, I just think it's too much, and I think Foster the, beats him. But um, he, like you said, even if he lose the Foster. He still got to face the um. He might he still come back to one twenty six. Still be champion. He probably gonna have to face the the cool boy Figueroa winner. Yeah, but if see, I really think in terms of like position, in terms of like putting yourself in a good position, this is Shaggy Foster's opportunity. Now if he go out there, now if he go out there and have a good ass performance. See, cause this is why I say one thirty is possibly the most up for grab division right now. No, I'm with you. I'm with you, and that's why I think it's wide open. It's funny because, like, I personally just because of what he did against Miguel Burchell a couple years ago, and because nobody's really come out and taken the top spot. I still got Valdez at number one, but I really think we're gonna have a new number one guy by the end of the year for sure. Bro, I feel like I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I feel like we're gonna have a. No, I think Navarrete fighting in February, so that depending on how that fight go, that would that would most likely leave Valdez in May, June. So then you got Cordina, now fighting in April. Okay, what I'm gonna say is. You there? Top five at one thirty is gonna look completely different by June. Yeah, yeah, I think Navarrete is going to end the year as as the top guy to me, but but it, it's it's going to be I, interesting to see, man. See, I think he could, but I feel like Navarrete is in a good position to where he can fight maybe three times next year. But if he can beat Lynn Wilson, maybe beat Valdez. If he can, I, I would love to see that. I would love to see the Valdez Navarrete win the face. The Shavkat Cordina winner. Yeah, that's top rank working with uh with working with Eddie Hearn though, so we'll see about that. But um yeah, I mean should be uh, interesting and should be wide open division. So anything else you want to add about one thirty, bro? Um, okay, I'm throw I'm gonna throw one more thing out there. If Loma lose to Haney, I wouldn't be surprised if he moved down to face the face Navarrete Valdez winner. I'm I'm just gonna like if I was Loma, I would keep that in my back pocket. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll see what's up, man. That, that that's not a bad idea for Loma because you know he's always been more natural at one thirty. So see, cause see, now nah, see, like one thing I always try to like, I, like I feel like fighters be too stuck on one thing. They they be missing out on a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I feel like a lot of opportunities these fighters be missing. All you gotta do is say, "I want the shot." Yeah, gotcha. All right, man. Well, we're going to move down one division to 126, bro, and take a look at what's happened this past year. We had uh, some guys, you know, I mean, um, like, you know, Navarrete really didn't fight much, but he's we know he's moving up to 130, and he's probably leaving the division. Ray Vargas, uh, I, I personally think he's going to lose and stay at 126 and fight the winner of Figueroa okay, and Colton. Um, I'm going to tell you, the two dudes at 126 who I feel is going to make the two biggest jumps, is going to be Robert C. Ramirez and Mauricio Lara. And I say those two because I think with Navarrete moving up, Ramirez got to have to face Ali Dalbe, and I feel he's going to beat Dalbe. I think so, and too. Lara, I feel, is going to beat Lee Wood, and then yeah. Josh Warren's supposed to face the winner of that fight, and I think he's going to beat Warrington. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it should be an exciting division uh, for top ranks. Get really got a couple belts that they can shut down. Like, uh, hold up, can... am I tripping? No, nah. I thought about something too, bro. Mick Conlon and yeah, Luis, you know, um, Luis, Lopez, yeah, Luis Lopez and and uh, and Michael Conlon are likely going to fight next for the IBF, and then you got Dog Bay and and uh, Ramirez probably mm. going to fight for the WBO. You could see those, those two guys try to unify by the end of the year. You know, that's a unification. Uh, yeah. I and then like the, the PBC has like got Ramirez. some good fighters, too. Like I said, with Vargas moving up. But I, again, I think he's going to lose and come back down. Hey, that's one thing Figaro and Fulton going to be good, man. And hey, one thing I can say about 126, though, is 126 one of the weird divisions in my way. All three promotions got some bangers at the yeah. division. Like PBC got got Vargas, McSayo, Russell, Figaro, and Cool Boy. And top rank got Conlon and Robinson and Navarrete and Dog Bay and Lopez. And then you got Dog Zone. They got Laura, Warrington, Wood. Like 120. If I'm going to be real, if 126, if the promoters worked with each other, 126 would be one of the top three divisions. Yeah, I, and I agree if they work together. But I, the, the cool thing about 126 this year is the promotions don't necessarily have to work together for us to that's get some good ass fights. Fact, though, I was just yeah. saying, I was just saying yeah. that, like, that was said, oh, I like 126, one of them weird spots. Is like, yeah, regardless of what promotion you want, you got some big ass fights over. It's not like yeah. it's not like 140, 154, 147, or 135, where like one promotion got all the fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm. I'm it's gonna be exciting. What about um the um? Do you think Gary Russell's gonna make a comeback this year, like a serious comeback? Um, let me try to look at. I'm trying to think. If I was Gary, if I was Gary Russell, I would move up. I, if I was Gary Russell, I wouldn't like. If I was Gary Russell, bro, I would not. I would try to petition. If I was Gary Russell, I would petition the WBC to allow me to face the fight for the man, the fight for mandatory spot for the. Um, I would try to get those shaggy fights to Vargas when at one thirty. If I was him, if I was, um, yeah, Gary yeah. Russell, I think that'd make a lot of sense. Yeah. What about Max Sio? What do you think he's going to do? Because it looks like he's kind of like a guy on the outside looking in right now. Because figure out, I think he got ordered. To, he got. No, we could. Not now that I think about it, they did order Max Sayo to face Dog Bay, and I don't think. Yeah, but I, I doubt so that either. fight happens. Dog Bay is probably going to end up fighting what's his name, uh, Ramirez for the vacant WBO. Um, I don't know what to do, man. Running running back with Gary Russell, you said one twenty six. Yeah, but I don't think he beats him if if he tries to run it back with him, man. Because get Gary Russell, be Gary Russell almost you, beat him with one arm, that. man. To be up to be under that one thirty, I don't know what Gary Roth or Leo Santa Cruz gonna do next show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, actually, Max Sayo and Santa Cruz wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad fight, but would but if 
is cool. Is is Santa Cruz gonna make one twenty six? He's not going. He's not going to one twenty six. Who knows what the hell that fool wants to do, man? That fool held up the division for so long. It it pissed me off, man. I, I yeah. agree. How do you how do you allow that? That's my thing. Oh yeah, he he literally did not fight for three and a half years as champion, and they let him keep the belt, bro. Ridiculous. And it's like. It's not even, it is not even the fact he was out. It's fact like, bro, he was still fighting. Yeah, he's just fighting at and another division. Yeah. division. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why it's good that the WBA decided to start consolidating the belts down to one champ per division, man, because you had to see, you had to, to sure up and get rid of some of this bullshit that they were doing. But, um, all oh. right, well, hey, Brandon Figueroa, Stephen Fulton, man, at 126, is it going to be different? No, I don't see it being much different. You think Fulton beats him again, or you think Brad Figueroa gets him? I think I think Fulton beats him again. Okay, I think that first fight was so good, and I think because Figueroa has always been a big dude at 122, I think it's going to be close again, but I think Figueroa is going to get the rematch, dude. Now, uh, I mean, now, now if that happens, right, but... does Stephen Fulton move back down to 122 and try to fight anyway? What do you think he does? No, I don't think he's going to do that. Yeah, I agree. I think he's staying at at one uh, at one thirty, dude. I mean one twenty six. I think he's staying here. I feel like I'm gonna be real. Stephen Fulton versus Figueroa too. I would put that on. I would if I was a PVC. I would put that on the on the on the Ruiz Wilder undercard. I would make that the co main. That's a good ass fight, and that's a good ass co feature right there, man. It really is. Yeah, I, I that's like a that's straight some, up banger right there. I feel like that's um, see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the PBC is not like if y'all gonna keep putting these fights on pay per view, bro. Can you at least stack these cards? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. They've been stacking with names, but they've been one one sided fights though. You that, know, and that's yeah. the problem. Like, yeah, and I, and I never get that. Like, bro, like I was saying, like, like why is y'all keep putting El Rio? And I and the crew on the same car, they're not fighting each other. When you can well, make these dudes fight each other now and make a lot of money. Well, they, they, I think I think they got it right when they did like Kayla Plant and Darrell to, as the undercard to Wilder. Because even though we knew Wilder was probably going to waste Hellenius, you had a good ass matchup as a co feature right there. And that's what we need going forward. You know, we need a co feature to be good, hey, man. Like, I think another thing, I, another thing I'm going to UFC over the boxing. When it comes to the undercard, the UFC promotes their undercard so much better. Like, when yeah. they're like, you see the the big posters, you gonna see the main event. You gonna see the two feature big, the two feature big fights right under getting the same amount of promotion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, hey, uh, to finish up one twenty six, I want to show some love to Luis Lopez and Josh Warrington. That was a that was a great fight, man. That really was, dude. Did you end up oh. catching that one? Uh, I seen I seen the highlights on that. I feel like, I I really feel like both dudes walked away in a favorable position because yeah, the Conlon Lopez fight that's gonna they going they think about they think about doing that with St. Patrick's Day weekend. That's yeah. a big fight. And then Warrington, he's Warrington, even though he come out with loss, he's still facing the the Lee Wood Laura winner. Likely, yeah, 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 yeah. But and, and then I want to show some lo- I want to show some love to Lee Wood for that come from behind twelfth round knockout of Michael Conlon man Bro, he was I, down I on really the cards see why, that was big I really don't see why they didn't do the Lee Wood Conlon rematch that I feel like they should have struck with Iron well it was different it was different promoters that's why man and that's what sucks about it is you had you had Eddie Hearn working with top rank and it was a mandatory fight so they didn't have to do that fight as a rematch there was no rematch clause so that's why that didn't happen yeah I, I get that but I feel like some fights are good enough to where like yeah, the promoter should be able to be like, you know what? Yeah, let's make this fight happen. Yeah, yeah. I wish. See, that's the thing. I wish they thought like we do, man. But, anyways, anything else you want to add about one twenty six, bro? Um, thing, let me think. Let me think. Nah, I ain't too much about one twenty six. All right, we're gonna go to one fifty four now, man. Where uh, Jermel Charlo, the undisputed super welterweight champ, man. What a fucking rematch with Brian Castaño we saw, man. That was a really great fight. That and a was good fight knockout. Year, in my opinion. It, it's up there. I haven't officially decided, but yeah, it's up there, man. That was a great fight. But I mean, what oh, a way to win for if, Charlo, bro. If I'm um, if I'm if I'm Charlo, bro, I'll just vacate the belt and prepare to move with the one sixty. 
Yeah, I think he's waiting for his brother to officially move to 168. But I said this last year. I'm going to say it again. I think Charlo is hoping, praying and hoping that Crawford and Spence happens. And if Crawford were to beat him, then Crawford moves to 154 and fights Charlo before Charlo moves up. I think he's hoping for that. He would love that type of fight, that type of atmosphere, you know, and, and I think that's why he's kind of hanging on. I, I really, I think he's going to beat Tim Zoo. What do you think about that? I think he beats Tim Zoo. You there, Mel? Yep, the hell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said, I think he's going to beat Tim Zoo. What do you think about that? I think it'll be Tim Zoo. I think um, Tony Harris offered to step in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, to fight Zoo instead? Yeah, because, I mean, Charlo's probably going to be out for a while because of that hand injury, at least at least two months. Yeah. Then you got to think about promotion and the PBC already not consistent with fight day. So, with that injury, no telling when he might fight. Hey, I'm going to be yeah. real, bro. March um, is looking like, March is looking like it's going to be a stacked month. Yeah, and then Fundora, man. Fundora and Lubin tore the house down. That might be fight of the year for me, man. That was a great fucking fight, dude. Oh yeah, Fundora, Fundora gonna be. A, I feel like Fundora gonna be a champion next year. I would yeah, really well, like I, I think Fundora I think versus. eventually Charlo's gonna give up the WBC, and then Fundora's your the new champ once that happens. I, I mean, he doesn't really even have like to fight for it. Um, I would really like to see Fundora versus Harrison. Yeah, me too. Harrison really uh, had a good comeback here when he beat Sergio Garcia because actually Fundora struggled with Garcia at the end of 2021. That was a good-ass fight, and Harrison went in there and completely outboxed him and dominated uh, Sergio Garcia. So mm -hmm. he threw himself back in the mix. That was pretty good, man. That was a good win right there. So, um, Liam Smith, he would have been in a good position for a title, but he's going up for the Chris yeah. Eubank fight. And yeah, I'm he's going up to 160. Though. I'm gonna be real though. That's the Chris Eubank Liam Smith fight. The winner of that fight is gonna be in a good position, bro. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, we'll, and we'll talk about that when we get to the middleweight division. That's that's coming up, but um, yeah, I mean that I I, I like um. Hey, what do you think about Danny Garcia versus Costano? Are they talking about that? I just I think you know, I think because not in the same thing they both on PBC. It, it sounds. Like I, I, I honestly, I honestly think Danny really has to pinpoint but Danny that Laura fight, though. Yeah, I, and I think Danny's really got to pinpoint his opponents at 154, and I think Castaño is going to be too much for him. But you never know. I mean, Danny, Danny's proved us wrong before, and we, he, you know, he's a good boxer puncher, and he handled what's his name, um, uh, uh Benavidez. He handled him, so you know, um. Yeah, I mean, I like Castaño. I want him to have a good uh, comeback fight because he fought his ass off, man. He went out on his shield. He, I mean, he fought hard against Charlo. He's got nothing to be ashamed of, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think Fundora could be the top dog in the division at the end of the year, man. I think Charlo I might feel, be moving I up, too. Before when Charlo Lee, Fundora going to be the top dog, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I definitely could see it. And the PBC has enough fighters to keep him busy, you know, especially if he becomes world champion. You kind of can't I avoid him at the, that I point. I wish the PBC kept the fighters more accurate. Yeah, well, this year's going to be – this year I really think you're going to see these top fighters fight two times because they almost have to because most of them are going to fight at the beginning of the year, and then they're going to have to come back before the end of the year. I mean, they, they, they kind of have to. So, um, so you're at least going to see all these top guys fight twice. So I hope at least twice a year, at least yeah. twice. Yeah. So yeah, one fifty four is going to be interesting because I think it's going to turn over in terms of the top guys. We're going to see belts go vacant, new champs. But I really do think I'm just I'm just calling it that. I really do think if if Crawford can get um, Spence in the ring before June and say he beats him, because I think Crawford's going to beat him if they fight. Um, I really could see Charlo and Crawford locking horns in the second half of the year, bro. I really could see that, dude. And I hope it happens. I, that would be great for boxing, dude. It really would. So, so we'll see. But, all right, man, that's that's pretty much what I got at 154. So, we're going to keep going. Um, let's look at welterweight, bro. Let's move down a division. Let's look at the welterweight. So, that, that that's a division me and you love to talk about a lot. Um wasn't a very active year. Uh, Crawford and Spence not happening really slowed down uh, um, the welterweight division. It, see, like I was saying earlier, Bud and Arrow wasted so much time. They got to make they got to make it happen at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Because now, 
Now you finna have mandatories. You got Stan and then Ortiz, not the good ass fight. They about yeah. to fight. Bud finna be the I, the IBF. Mostly he win. Thurman WBC and the pen and, and I'm not gonna count Connor Connor Ben's supposed to be fighting next year too, so I'm not gonna count on him coming back either. Yeah, it's just he doesn't have a lot of options because he's with uh, Matt Room and stuff, and I don't know. Reason, but I, reason why reason why I still say his name is because is because he's still in like top five in the WBO rankings. Yeah, I think he's gonna have to earn it that way, and maybe by the end of the year he can get himself into position for something big. But I think this is Boots' year to kind of take over the division, even if he doesn't get a big fight just because he's probably going to be upgraded to champion. And, you know, and guys like Ugas, Thurman, if, you know, hey. even, even even guys like Butayev, because they're with the PBC, they might just be like, hey, I'll fight him. Give me a crack at I him. Think you know? Booth will need, I feel like Booth will need a belt. Well, he is. He's going to become interim champion on the 7th. And, and then if Spence gives it up, then he's automatically champ. So See, you know, so, get a belt like you're saying. You got some big ass fight, Thurman. Ugas. Yeah, you got like you saying, Bootar, Rashidi Ali, Me Machine. Yeah, yeah Crowley, you got Cody Crowley. You got guys out there in the PBC that will fight them. You know, so and then um, Cody Crowley will be Cody Crowley. So he will be back in February in the yeah. WBC Eliminator. So yeah, if you put if you put me back in February in the WBC Eliminator, there's only three options. He be the face in Thurman next. Ugas next or Mean Machine next? Yeah. He's in a WBC eliminator. I'm the three highest ready contenders right now in WBC. So, unless he faced, so he most likely faced one of those three dudes next, and all three of those would be great fights. Well, and it's all going to depend on what the fuck happens between Spence and Crawford, bro. And I just hope everybody doesn't wait around for these fools. You know, like even like even it, longer, bro. bro. You know, he, uh, uh, to be honest, now I just want to see him fight. I wanted it to be for undisputed. I still want it to be for undisputed, but I just want to see him fucking fight, it, dude. I, I mean, feel like the best way, the the best thing I feel like I have to right now to keep the division moving, keep everything going, and what to wait. Okay, you do. Okay, Booth facing on January. Now let's say Booth and if Booth and Rashida win their next fight, you put those two against each other. You put Stanionis in, in Virgil. I'll say you do Thurman and Ugas. You do Cody Crowley and Mean Machine. And then you do Arab versus the Bud. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some good ass Arab- there's some good ass matchups to be made. Arab- you may Arab- you you mentioned one that I can't wait for. Stanionis and Virgil Ortiz, man. I, that's gonna be a good fight, dude. I really yeah, believe that, man. man. Yeah. Who, who you picking in that yeah. one? I got Virgil winning that one, bro. I got Virgil in that fight. That's a good ass fight, though. If, yeah. if Virgil can stop staying on it, man, yeah. I yeah. really feel like Vir- I really feel like I don't. I, don't, I, I think Virgil can be a, can be a star. Yeah, me too. Me too. He's definitely got he's the talent. Great. You know. Hey, I, and then of feet, I feel like Virgil doing a good thing for the regular, but also if he wins that belt. And the, he in a good bitch because look, if Aaron and Bud don't fight, guess what? I get elevated to the champion. Yeah. And then you got Boots as a champion too. I mean, I mean, let, let's be real, bro. What do we want to see in the future in the next couple of years? We want to see Boots and Virgil. So that that's hey, a fight people want to see. Nothing, there's another thing I'm saying. I, I, I peeped too about the Virgil and the, and the Golden Boy. I really believe Golden Boy is, is holding off on Rocha and Virgil until Virgil gets a belt. Yeah, probably just to make that a title fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. Um, well, let, let, hey, let, let's ask the question right now. Do you think Spence and Crawford's going to happen? I'm going to give it a 70% chance. Of happening? Yeah. Okay, I think you're a little optimistic. I'm I'm hoping. But I'm I'm going to say 60-40. And, and the only reason why I go 70% is because, like I said earlier, they're going to have mandatory now. Yeah. So they're going to have to come. If they want to fight for undisputed, they're going to have to make this fight happen. Well, me and you talked about it earlier. It's got to happen by June or or it's not going to be for undisputed. So It's not going to be yeah. for undisputed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to show some love to Errol Spence, though, man. He fucking put hands on your Dennis Ugas. Thurman the year. Ugas, my bro. Thurman Ugas. Mean well, I know, but I, I just want to show some. I just want to show some love to Errol Spence, man. He put it on Ugas, bro. That was he fucked him up, man. That was a really like good performance. People, see, the Aaron Ugas fight, that fight just proved me more how fans be switching their opinions. I remember what people were saying before that fight. Oh yeah, Ugas just be man, he a threat. Errol might not be the same fight. Errol beat the shit out Ugas. Not Ugas wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love how that works, bro. I love how that works. You're always gonna have people talk shit, though, bro. You're always gonna yeah, have. That's how that. I know y'all. Just, people yeah. just be fans stuff. That's the that's the safe stuff about fighters. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I want to show. Ugar. Yeah, I want to show some love to another fight, bro. That happened this past year. Stan Jonas and Butayev was fucking good. That was that was, a, that that was, was a physical was, ass fight. Yeah, that was a good that ass was, fight, bro. That was the Butayev. I had this Butayev. This this is why I say about this is why I love about what's way. What's way is the most talented division to where, bro. The top the, the from the top fifteen and twenty dudes will give you problems. Like Butab Butab is like in the top fifteen range. He will give some of the dudes in the top five trouble. Yeah, yeah. Stylistically, yeah. Like, can you imagine Butab versus Uga? That is a good ass fight. Well, that's what's good about welterweight going forward, even when these guys move on, is you got good young blood because welterweight's a historical division, bro. I mean, that's well, always that's a really good division. That's what I like about welterweight is. That reason why welterweight always be my favorite division because, like, welterweight throughout the history of boxing has always been a good-ass division. Yeah, always, bro. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you, too, bro. The most underrated era of welterweight, bro, in my opinion, is the post-Sugar Ray Pre De La Hoya era, when you had the the Zab Judas and the Corey Spinks and the oh yeah and the Mayorgas yeah. and the Vernon Ford, the that that is the most underrated. Oh period yeah, of well that that the- <laughs> I was uh I was telling my wife about that um when um <laughs> remember uh, the second fight between Judah and Spinks after Spinks won the first fight when yeah. uh he came out to um it's going down. Uh, Corey Spinks did in St. Louis because he was at home and he came out dancing to, to the song and all that shit. And then Zab Judah knocked him out in his own town. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> you people know? forget, bro. People forget. Like, that's why I tell you, like, that's why I said, like, that was an underrated period for what to wait, yeah. bro. Yeah, underrated like, because those dudes weren't stars like Sugar like Sugar Shane and, and Sugar oh, yeah. Ray and I'm always, Oscar. I'm always saying but, that, bro. People. At they peak, at they peak, Mayorga, I mean, I mean, I mean not Mayorga, at they peak, Vernon Forrest and Zab Judah was problems. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, but at, Forrest handled Mosley both times, you know. If you put, and, if you put, they're the reason why a lot of the big names didn't really want to fight Vernon Forrest and goddamn Zab yeah. Judah. That was the reason oh, that, why. Vernon Forrest was the right handed Paul Williams, bro. That dude was just so difficult because he was tall and that's he was, what made he the my, that's what made the Mayorga fight like so shocking. It was like because yeah. people thought Vernon Forrest was gonna be running with it for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Mayorga knocked his ass out, and then Forrest looked scared in a rematch, and Mayorga beat him again. Yeah. So but um yeah, well that's what's cool about welterweight, bro, is even even when it's not the top division in boxing, you still have some good young blood on the rise that's going to keep that division healthy, bro, and then going to keep it uh, strong, you know? So, Agreed. yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the turnover in uh, 2020. Then, uh, I seen some with Jose Ramirez. He was saying, like, they plan on going to 147 soon, and once he go to 147, he's going to most probably move to the PBC. But he, he didn't just say the PBC specifically, but he said he's going to move to the network where he got majority of the 150, 147 dudes, and that's the PBC. But I'm going to be real. Jose Romero get Jose Romero has to get worked at at four and forty seven. Yeah, I think so too. But I want to I want to ask one question before we move on to the next division. No matter what happens between Spence and Crawford, whether they fight, whether they don't fight, do you think these two dudes are staying at welterweight? If they don't fight each other, enough, then yeah, yeah. Well, say 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 Crawford beats Spence or Spence beats Crawford. Obviously, we'll have a rematch. It probably won't be for all the belts uh, if it's close. 
But even if it's not close, do you think both dudes move up and wait? I mean, I, I, I see I see them both moving up, bro. I don't know. They're going to move up soon. Yeah. Yeah, I could see them both fighting at 154 by the end of the year or on the move to 154 for sure. Agree. I feel like if, like if Aaron and Bud don't fight by, the, by June, they're going to be fighting at 154 by the end of the year. Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. Well, hey, let's close welterweight on that note, man. But division we both love, man. That was a good conversation about that. Now we're going to move on to another good-ass division. It might be the best division or at least the deepest division in boxing. We're going to talk about the lightweights, bro, 135. If, so, if the lightweight might, if light, if them do that lightweight can make them fight happen, that's a stack that division. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. I, I think lightweight's really on the rise, dude. I mean, even with losing – you, you know a division's good when you lose Tiafima Lopez and Ryan Garcia, and it's still a good ass division, bro. You know, mm. I mean, I, bro, I, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's gonna be good to me though. That them dudes don't want to fight Shakur, bro. Yeah, yeah, but you know they might they might not have a choice. I mean, they might have to fucking fight him because he's gonna be a mandatory to the belts or like um, I I mean if Devin Haney or Vasily can pull out whoever wins that one they might not be able to avoid Shakur they might be able to avoid him this year but Shakur is going to be knocking on that fucking door in 2024 see, that's the reason why I say like I don't get why them do turning Shakur down because like bro if you beat Shakur season the WBC mandatory is going to be the direct mandatory to the winner of that fight Yeah. so if you beat Shakur season you're the direct mandatory to Haney and Loma yeah, the winner yeah, hanging sure. on. You're the mandatory to the winner of that fight, but Shakur, he kind of like boots. He gonna have to get a belt. Yeah, and he's just but so just think, ultra talented and 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 different. But they talking about doing Shakur versus um Jermaine Ortiz. That's a good ass fight. Yeah, I read that earlier, man. I, I I think so too. Um, you know, much love to Devin Haney. He dominated Cambosos both fights. He he really beat him up in the second fight. So, hey, what you think about um? What do you think about Cambosos versus JoJo Diaz? Um, I mean, I like the matchup. Both are coming off back-to-back losses. I mean, it's a good matchup. I just don't – to be honest, I always thought Cambosos was a one-hit wonder, you know, and he's solid. He's decent. And I and I never saw JoJo sitting at the top of the division ever, so it's a good matchup, but it's kind of one of those ones where it's like, all right, I mean, you guys are just going to stay alive another day, but you're never going to go anywhere, if that makes sense, you know? But in terms of the top of the division, I don't see either one of those dudes becoming champion again at 135. I, I just can't see it. Um, right the Pater, I think they're going to just keep the paid on doing what they're doing, keep the paid on on their side of the screen until the Pater gets ordered to fight for a belt. Well, he's WBA then, number three right now, so he might get ordered to fight for a belt at some point. Yeah. And then, he doesn't think about Pitbull Cruz, right? Throughout the whole 2022, this man was chasing the WBC belt. He and gets tank. ordered to face yeah. the career from mandatory. Now, all of a sudden, he wants the IBL belt. Yeah, I mean, well, and the thing about that that's funny, bro, is he he says that, but not once has he mentioned Gustavo Lemos, who's the number one guy at IBF, and he ended Lee Selby's career. And remember, Lee Selby, he fought Cambosos the, two years ago, and I personally thought he beat him. He lost by a split decision. I personally felt he beat Cambosos, but it was a close fight. But Gustavo Limos dominated Selby and stopped him in five rounds and retired Selby. And now he's the number one contender. I don't hear Pitbull calling out Limos, bro. Bro, Pitbull. You know, Pitbull's see, pissed me Pit, off this year. See, what Pitbull really wants, he really wants to get that tank rematch. But tank next two fight is sold up and Cruz in a position, Cruz in a position where Nine times out of ten, he probably got to, to get the tank fight or even get a belt. He's gonna have to fight one of the top dudes, and yeah. he's looking at he's he going after the IBL mandatory. He just feel Gustavo Limo is possibly to eat the the favorable matchup for him, bro. Yeah, because and and, and and I get that, but but the thing is, is like don't be calling dudes out, and then when Shakur says, "All right, let's do this," and then back out of it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't I'm stand saying. that shit. And then this thing too, though, right? We were talking about this later, early in the year, bro. Like people, people were acting surprised. Like, bro, his team turned down the Ryan fight. Yeah. Like, and this, but see the thing, I want to see Cruz. 
On the PBC side, the three best options would be Roley, Frank Martin, or Douglas Santos. Yeah. I don't know if he'll fight any of them three dudes next, though. I don't see why he wouldn't want to fight uh fight um R- Roley. I would go at the Roley vote. Huh? Yeah. I think that's the best matchup for him right there, you know? So why not? But Frank Martin Frank Cruz, Martin is, is they, such Cruz a difficult fight. Cruz and his team, what they most likely doing is they most likely just playing it safe until they can either get the tank fight or they can get ordered to fight for a belt. Yeah. All right. Well, um, what do you think, uh, Haney and Lomachenko? Who you think is going to win that one? I got Haney in that one. Okay. I got Loma, but I think it could really could go either way. At hey, this I'm going to tell you another do. fight that I really want to see next year, bro. I really want to see this fight. Keyshawn Davis versus Nakatelia. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good, man. That would be good. Um. <laughs> Another the another huge matchup if it's still gonna happen because we don't know with Tank Davis being arrested and all that shit but uh, you know reportedly Tank Davis and um, Ryan Garcia is happening at a catchweight of one thirty six uh, it looks like April or May who you got in that one if they do fight I got I got a sixty forty Tank I give Ryan a way better chance of winning than people think he does uh, I think I, I honestly I, it's nothing against Tank. I've always said Ryan stylistically, uh, the fact that he's a body puncher, the fact that Tank can be hit, and the fact that Ryan is about four inches taller, and he's the bigger guy. I I, I honestly don't see what everybody sees by picking Tank. But okay, I, I'm not saying Tank don't have a chance of winning. I just think Ryan's going to beat him. But I mean, see, I think it, I give give Tank the I give Tank the edge right now. Because I feel Tank is the more experienced. But I think Ryan needs to do the type of things up, but we. But Ryan got the speed. He Ryan got speed, power, and he big. Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, that's a big reason. I feel like that's a big reason why Tank wanted to fight at one thirty six because yeah, Ryan's a big guy. Like he, yeah. And then the thing about Ryan is he's not even close to his prime, but he's still growing. Well, like, what Ryan, the one thing the Ryan one thing I like about prime, oh, go ahead. Uh, when Ryan hit his prime year, he'd probably be a what weight. Yeah, probably. Um, The one thing I like about Tank right now, though, like kind of taking the decisions of his own career, again, I'm I'm trying to push aside his personal shit that could cost him. It really could. But if he gets his personal shit on track and just focuses on his career and he's got Mayweather out of the picture now, um, if he beats um, uh, Ryan, he's still going to fight at lightweight. And – I really could see him locking horns with uh, Loma, the Loma Haney winner, because he's the WBA regular. He could ask for a mandatory right then. Oh yeah, you know. So I wonder, um, which, hey, I wonder what they're going. I wonder, I wonder who Goldberg gonna put um, who Goldberg gonna put the pay in there with. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting, man. Because like I said, it, it might end up being a mandatory, bro, just because. Just because you know he's high up in the WBA hey, and, um, right now, and Frank Martin, he, Frank Martin really put his stuff on the map too. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's an open division, it really is, bro, and it's a very deep division. So it's gonna be gonna be a fun year at lightweight, man. Especially yeah, Ryan, especially the fights gonna, that we know. Yeah, Ryan's gonna need some big to get us back in conversation. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens there. But all right, we'll wrap up one thirty-five with that. We're gonna go back now and look at one twenty-two super bantamweight and see what's going on there heading into the year. So, um, wasn't really a big year in terms of big fights at uh, at one twenty-two, man. Kind of disappointing year. But Stephen Fulton proved showed everybody why he's the best there. Dominated former champ Daniel Ramon. Actually retired Daniel Ramon. R- R- uh, Daniel Ramon retired after the fight. Um, that was impressive. Um, MJ Ahmed Aliyev, the other unified champ, he dominated veteran Ronnie Rios impressively with a broken hand. He went after the knockout and got it in the twelfth round. Outside of that, nothing really big happened. There weren't really a, a lot of other big um, fights that took I place. Think what everybody really wanted to see, they just, what everybody wanted to see, they just want they want to see MJ foot and fade anyway. That's what everybody wants to see. Yeah, that's what everybody's talking I feel about. Like we made, I feel like we made we made MJ and Fulton so interesting for any way that both of them are completely different style. Like Fulton, you got size and versatility. MJ, you got footwork and power. Yeah, yeah. Then nothing. One twenty two is you got okay. You got those two dudes. They the top two. But then 
You look at the other three dudes in the top five. You got Azat, you got Louis Neri, and you got um Lu- Louis the Lean. Like those are solid dudes to fight too, but the big fight yeah. is MJ and Fulton. But I feel like I'm gonna be honest though, I I I can see any way in MJ happen before MJ and for Fulton and MJ, Fulton and anyway. Well, well, personally, I think Fulton's done at 122. I think he's gonna move up and. Win or lose against Figueroa, if he wins, obviously he's in line for the title. If he loses to Figueroa, I, th- I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it'll be close, and I think he's going to stay at 126. So I think the best thing for anyway right now would be, in my opinion, would be go to 122, depending on what fourth and do, try to get a belt, and then go fight, go for the MJ fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes the most sense. I could see, I could see in a way – um, fighting MJ by the end of the year, or at least having one or two belts by the end of the year, which is going to be big for him. You know, it really is because, man, in a way, it is a lot of people watch him, man, and, and a lot of people have him ranked number one pound for pound right now, dude. You know, if so he can go up to one twenty two. I say like he went to one. He can go to one twenty two, win a belt, and I say he can beat. Now one twenty two got some good fighters. Got some good fighters. For yeah, him, though you got. Fulton, MJ, Isaac, Casimir. That's some good fights for him at 122. Yeah. Well, and even Liam Davies just uh, put himself on the map when he beat uh, Inuit, uh, Inuit Baluda. That was a pretty big win for him. So, yeah, there's some good there's some good fights there and then some solid veterans. So, we'll see how 122 turns out, but I definitely think it's going to be the year of the monster, bro, at 122 for sure. So, so um yeah, uh, I think I think that's good for 122. Now we're going to move over to middleweight, man. This is the division me and you've been complaining about <laughs> for for a minute ever since me and you started talking. Uh 160 pounds. Um you know, it, we're losing Boo Boo Andre, which I'm glad uh, we need to get rid of him finally. He's moving up one, to 168. Um one thing needs a big fight so bad. It really does, man, and and it, and it's disappointing because it doesn't look like we're gonna get it anytime soon. Like Charlo's probably gonna be gone. Um, Triple G is still the man. He but his two mandatories. He's got to fight Foul Chow first, which is not a big fight. And if he gets through that, then he'll he'll be in line for Lara, which is a good fight, you know. But I think people because both those guys are forty and thirty nine years old. I think just people want to see guys like Munguia fight, but Munguia doesn't want to fight nobody, bro. Munguia and don't want to fight nobody with a pause. I know, man. It, it's it's so fucking disappointing because he had such a good, like, promising 2021, bro, that he comes out and fights three times in 2022, and it was just like the guy, the best guy that he fought beat another guy, you know, to, to you know, in Jimmy Kelly. That was the best dude that he fought, and that dude wasn't even that good, you know? So, bro, and, yeah. And then... I don't know what they. I don't know what Bob Aaron gonna do with Johnny back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he really would, doesn't have a lot of options in the and with top rank. And then one six in general is just like one six just needs a big fight. It just needs a big fight. Well, there's good fighters there to make big fights if the guys actually want to fight each other. You know that that's and, the thing. That's but the but I mean, to me, if Bob is smart, uh. Maybe, maybe if Murata wants to come back and like take a tune-up bout, and then Murata could fight Janabek in the second half of the year, that would be a good test for Janabek, you know? Because okay. Murata's a good fighter. He gave Triple G all he could handle for like five rounds, you know. I so, feel like if, if they're gonna do that, I would like to see. Um, I would like to see Janabek face with the dude name. I think Devin Chenko or Brian Mendoza would be a good opponent. Brian Mendoza, he just had the other fight against Rosario, and then Devin Chenko, that's a good fight. Well, Mendoza's probably more makeable because uh, Darren Chenko, I know, is with the PBC, so that's a tough fight to make right there. But, um, yeah, it's one of those divisions where you just got to be able to sign on the dotted line to fight each other. I mean, Chris Eubank and Liam Smith should be solid, but Chris oh, yeah. Eubank doesn't seem to want to win a world title so he could set up it, the big fight. So, I don't know. Is Eubank. He cool with them UK paydays. Yeah. And see, but think about it, like I was saying earlier, though, in terms of UK paydays, the Chris Eubank and Liam Smith wouldn't have been in a good position because you win that fight, you put yourself in a position to get title. But then at the same time, you got 
you got a potential fight with Kel Brook. You got the they could probably get Conor Ben. They got the one of that fight, depending on what they do, they could be in some good, especially Leon Smith. I feel like Leon Smith, in terms of putting yourself in position, he needs to win more than than Eubank. Yeah, I think Eubank's gonna get him though. What do you think is gonna happen in that fight? I think Eubank gonna be him also. But yeah, yeah. Um, Adamas, I think, is gonna be your WBC champ by the end of the year, or by, even Adamus by midway. Jamel. Yeah, because I think he'll get a uh, he'll get upgraded, and he, yeah, he'll probably fight Jamel, which is a good fight. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, Guia, I don't know, man. I don't know if that fool's Dude, actually going to fight somebody good, geez, man. Uh, another thing I would say, though, if I'm, if I'm Bob, yeah, hold up. Is, is, is Leon Smith versus Chris Eubank happening in February or January? That's in January. January 21st, bro. Yeah. If that, if I'm Bob Aaron, bro, the winner of that fight, I'm, I would throw them a lot of money to face Danny Beck. Yeah. Especially yeah, well. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Eubanks, the WBO's number two contender, and what's his name? Munguia was is still technically ranked number one. And he passed on the fight, so Eubank feel, would technically be the mandatory challenger. Yeah, yeah but, I just don't think Eubank wants a fight like that, bro. For some reason, that fool has passed yeah. on those fights, and he's he only looks for big fights in either I the UK or guys like saying, or, or he I calls out guys like Triple G or Canelo. That's it. I seen Roy Jones. He was in the interview talking about. He was like, "What he'll prefer, Chris?" He felt like Eubank. If Eubank can beat Liam Smith, like he was like, if they were planning out his next three fights, they would say it'd be Liam Smith, Triple G. Then had a first title defense in in a big UK fight against Kale Brook. Now yeah. knowing Eubank, if he could do that, I can see him very much doing that. If he, yeah, like I would. Now don't get me wrong. I, I think. Eubank, if he beats Liam Smith, I really think Eubank's going to wind up facing Conor Ben or Kale Brook next year. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, man, hopefully. So, all right, man, we're going to call that, uh, call it there at for the 160-pound division, and we're going to go up to 175 and look at light heavyweight, bro. So, um, a lot of things, I mean, this is obviously a division that r- runs around Canelo and what he's going to do. Um Baval, man, what a what a year that fool had upsetting Canelo to keep the belt and then dominating Gilberto Ramirez, man. That was just he had such a good year, dude. Re- really good year for Dimitri Baval. Um and then better be of just destroyed Joe Smith Jr. in their unification bout. That was huge. Yeah, I thought I thought better be of Joe Smith was gonna be a war. That was nowhere near close to that. Yeah, I mean, he caught him early, and, and Joe Smith just couldn't recover. And better be him. I mean, what a record. 18-0, and 0, 18 knockouts, man. I mean, that's just he, impressive. And he's beating Joe some Smith solid Jr., fighters. Joe Smith Jr., bro, he fell back to bad habit once he got rocked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in all honesty, he hasn't been hurt like that very often in his career, bro, especially early. Same, I mean, Joe, like, Joe Smith's a hot dude. That's a good fighter. And then it was like – what really made that what really made that shit impressive to me was the fact better be of is so much more skilled than people think. Yeah. Well he's he's a very good boxer puncher, bro. Like I wouldn't say he's a better boxer than Baval, but he's he hits so hard, he's a good boxer puncher. So and then like with better be of, he don't waste no punches. Yeah. Yeah, well, I really would love to see Baval and Better Be of bro, for the undisputed, but I don't know if Baval is willing to take that risk before Canelo, the Canelo rematch, you know? Um, and um, that's what's interesting. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think Better Be is going to beat Anthony Yard in January, even though I, I think Anthony Yard's a very live underdog, bro. I don't think people should count him out of that fight at all because um, he hits hard and he can box a little bit too. Um, outside of that, I mean, Better Be of the remainder of the year, if he doesn't fight Baval, I mean, Callum Smith, he's probably going to get a crack at him if Baval doesn't fight because Callum Smith's a WBC number one. Um, and I think he knocks Callum Smith out too. I really think the only guy that could test better be of is Baval. And to be honest, I think the only guy that can test Baval at 175 is better be of bro. And because the Canelo rematch is looming, I don't know if these two guys fight for undisputed. What do you think? I can see 
Um, okay, the thing about it is, okay, better be up in January, and then I think he started that Ramadan stuff right after that. So he's probably not going to fight till maybe summer 2021, 2023, I'm going to say. And by then, I think people going to have a fight in the first half. I think he might wind up fighting Colin Smith or Buwati. I think he'll fight Buwati, yeah. And he fight Buwati, that's not a good win. Honestly, I don't think Buwati's that good, man. I think Bival's going to kick the shit out of him, to be honest. Of so, course, but shit, looking at the rankings, he has a good win ranking-wise. Yeah, yeah, it is because especially Buwati being ranked so high, and he's undefeated too. So, um, yeah, but I mean, the fight one, is, it yeah. better be a That's what needs to get made. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, to be honest, I, I it, that's another – it's almost like welterweight right now is if they don't fight in the first half of the year – they're both going to be facing mandatories and it's going to be really hard for them to fight in the second half of the year and or even, even until 2024. Cause the second half of the year, he want to face Bill the second half of the year. So yeah. Well, and it's shitty because man, like the IBF mandatory is going to be John Pascal or Michael Eifert, bro. Like either one of those dudes would stand a chance against fucking better be dude. Like why they didn't, I don't know why they didn't order Pascal or Joe Smith. That would have been so much better. Yeah. But, but I mean, I think most people would be convinced that Joe Smith probably wins that. And you think better be it wants to fight Joe Smith again? I mean, probably not. It's just the thing is, is you know, Pascal is just such a – that's such a waste of time fight for better be if he becomes mandatory, bro. You know, because you know Pascal stands no chance in that fight, you know, and it's just it, – it, it's shitty. That's like a waste of time. That's all I'm saying, especially when this is, what, three years in a row that, we're, that we want to see better be even Bavall, and now they own all four of the belts. So, I mean, I, I'm hoping – trust me, I want to see Bavall and Canelo too, but I really want to see Bavall and better be it for Undisputed, bro, because oh, it's such a good matchup. So I think better be a beat, though. You think he beats him? Yeah, yeah, I think I think Bavall beats him, bro. But I think it's close, and I think it could go either way because I just think Bavall's the better, better the be better up, boxer. Though, but I think better be up, though his window is closing. Yeah, for sure, because he's up there. I think he's like thirty six. He, not think better be up like 30, 10, 38. Yeah, let me check. Let me check to be sure because I because I just did uh, my top ten on that division. Yeah, he's thirty seven. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Better be uh, his window is closed. Like he running through these dude, but if we being technical, man, better be of getting up there. Yeah. Yeah. But the end Anthony Yari, that's a tough that's gonna be a good fight. I I don't I got better be up, but that's gonna end in knockout. Yeah, for sure. And and Anthony Yard, I think he's actually more of a threat than Joe Smith, to be honest, because he's he's a better boxer, that's why, than Joe Smith. Hey, if he be in the yard, that's another good name on his resume. Man. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, like, man. Let's close uh, 175 at that. And we're going to look at 140 pounds. And me and you have talked about this division this year. This division just got caught fire this year, bro, in I 2022. Expect, see, 140, I expect Devin Hand to be up there for in the second half of the year. Yeah, he um, might. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right now, I would. Right now, I would have pro grade as the man. Right now, if you had to ask me, like who I think is the man at one forty right now, I would say pro grade. I think pro grade in terms of like if if they fought right now, who would win? I still got to go show Josh Taylor some love just because he shut down and went and became undisputed. See, the reason why you say pro, reason why you say Josh Taylor is because. He's supposed to be moving up. I'm just he's supposed to be moving up. And so I just bought them bought the men to him. But I mean, of course he's still the, the man right now. But Yeah, yeah, but but the thing is, is if he beats Catarell, instead of moving up, why not like give Tia Fima Lopez a chance and a big it'd be a big money fight. And I think most <laughs> people would feel Taylor I'm would be beat real. him. I'm gonna be real. You can tell you another reason why Jose Mary didn't want to fight Pro Gray. You there? Hey, bro. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You know another reason why Ramirez didn't want to fight pro grades? Yeah. Because you said in the interview, like, look, those those 135, we said, like, bro, them 135 dudes from the movie, they're going to be big money fighting. 
when yeah. when Tio and Devin and Ryan move up. That's why a lot of the one forty dudes don't want to move up right now. Well, yeah, and especially for a guy like Taylor because he's got ties with top rank. There's nobody at one forty seven with top rank, bro. So yeah, why not make the big fights at one forty? And progress said the same thing. Progress was like, look, I can make one forty seven, but bro, all these big names are gonna be in the division. Why would I move up now? Yeah, he he definitely see progress was clear. That's what I like about him. He said he wants to shut down one one forty and then move to one forty seven. So I respect that. Um, I think. I think another thing with Prograde is is this too. I think another thing with Prograde is you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I think another thing with Prograde is don't want when after he lost to Taylor. Don't want forty dudes stop acting like he even at fifty. So now that he champion, he trying to get that payday. Yeah. Well, I think Taylor's gonna beat Catarell, and then T Tio is his number one contender, bro. So why not just fight Tio? I mean, I, it just makes sense, you know. So, yeah. And on the other, and on the other side, me and you were talking about this. Gary Russell with the PBC is probably going to fight Puello. He probably beats him. Then they fight. The winner fights Barroso. I think Gary Russell fights three times. I think by the end of the year, he could be fighting the winner of Matias and Ponce for, for in a unification bout, bro. Hey. I wouldn't count that out. Yeah. Yeah, I think 140 is going to be uh, a lot of big fights and a, see, and a lot of excitement see, like, in see, 2023. It's the same thing. Like, think about this, right? Think about this. Like we were talking earlier, when you had those divisions that don't really have big names, no divisions, like 140 was a competitive bit. They didn't have big names. But now you're yeah. getting the Devin, the Ryan, the Tanks, the T.O.s in the division. Now you're getting eyes in that division, not money in that division. The Pro yeah. Grade, the Taylor, the Ramirez, they're not trying to move up right now. Yeah. And Ryan, and Ryan, win or lose, win or lose against Tank is probably going to fight 140 going forward. Hey, I'm going to tell you, look, you ain't even got to just look, think through, look at 158. 158 had no name, but now the Canelo, the, now you're looking at the, now you're seeing all these dudes want to move up to 158 now. Yeah. Yeah, because they following the money. It's gonna be the same way. Once Arrow moved to one fifty four, you gonna see the, you gonna start seeing Thurman and and Uga move. They gonna follow the money. Well, and and that's the thing about that's the thing about one forty is top rank has some good matchups that they can bring you, and then the PBC has some good matchups they can bring you, and then you got Pro Gray who he's he's popular. So you got guys like Sandor Martin and guys like that that might be willing to fight him. You know, I mean, so yeah. should be a pretty good year at 140. A pro-grade, a pro-grade, a pro-grade, pro Martin fight would be a good fight. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think that that might be the arena he goes in just to kind of uh, put one leg up over Tiafima Lopez. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and they, like, if he were to knock out Mar Martin, then he could say, like, hey, look at what but, you couldn't do to Lopez, you know? So, see. Them dudes on top rank, they really trying to see what John Taylor gonna do next. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we're definitely dancing around what Taylor does. That that's for sure. And Taylor and what I think Catarell, I think they finally agreed on March they're gonna fight in a rematch. So, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but it should be a good year at one forty. Um, all right, we only got a couple divisions left, and we are gonna go to one sixty eight for Canelo. And what's going on at Super Middleweight heading into 2023? Um, you know, Canelo only fought one time. He fought Triple G, uh, beat him by a convincing decision. Uh, and, um, you know, the rest of the division, Benavidez beat Lemieux. John Ryder probably had the best best year at 168, beating Daniel Jacobs and then Zach Parker. Um, Caleb Plant had a great knockout of Anthony Durrell. And Demetrius Andre's moving into division, um, so you know should be should be a, a solid year coming up at 168. What do you think? Oh yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. I'm gonna tell you though, bro. Um, Boo calling off that Charlo fight. I'm gonna tell you the fight they really she did probably thought it would be a smart move. You should go after the Morel fight. Yeah, I mean somebody's gonna have to fight Morel 
in the, at least by the second half of the year. And I, I'm totally with you. And I think Andre, if he if he stops talking so much fucking shit, he's gonna have to fight somebody good. You know, I mean, but we've been here with Boo Boo before. I'm not convinced that Boo Boo or Charlo wants to fight anybody threatening outside of Canelo. I mean, I can I agree with that to an extent. I agree with it also. Just based yeah. off the action, like that's my thing about Boo Boo and Charlo. Is I'm a fan of both of them, dude. But they fans want to make make you believe that nobody wants to fight them. But I'm keep seeing proof that that's not true. Yeah. Well, my thing is this, like, you even have guys, me and you talked about this too. You got guys at 168 for your first fight or two, like Caleb Truax, like Anthony Durrell. Why won't you fight those guys at least? Or even yeah, Jose like, Ustadigi. Like the Jesse Hart, like. Yeah. I mean, they was, won't even fight those dudes, you know? That's what pisses me off about those guys right there. And my thing I always say, like, they're dude, they're good fighters you can fight while while trying to get the big names yeah and and really i mean would anybody think i'm gonna point, put you on the spot would anybody think that caleb truax beats andre or charlo no would anybody think that that uh, Darrell, after the way he got knocked out against plant and was getting out boxed d- would you favor him over charlo or andre no you wouldn't you know, so why not fight guys like that? You know what I'm saying? I just don't get it, man. It, it really pisses me off that those two guys refuse to fight anybody good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Canelo, I personally think Canelo's going to fight John Ryder and knock him out in May. And then I oh, yeah, think he gonna, he gonna... I think he's going to cash in on Bival talking about moving down to 168. And then what do you think about that fight? I personally think if Bavall moves down to 168, Canelo's going to beat him, bro. I mean, you could be right on that. Well, I just think, you know, when's the last time we saw something like that? And I and I remember clearly because I actually went to that fight. It was in 2012. Chad Dawson was the man at 175, and he made the mistake after he beat Hopkins convincingly. He made the mistake of saying, "Hey, I'm going to move down to 168 and fight Andre Ward." And Andre Ward was like, bl- "Come on!" Shot of. And I actually went to that fight, bro, and and I thought it could go either way just because of the, who they were and the talent, and because Chad cut seven pounds, Andre Ward beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not saying Canelo's going to beat the shit out of Bavall, but I look at it like this. You're cutting weight after fighting at 175 for your whole career. Canelo is very good at 168. And what what makes him so good, bro? He's a great body puncher. That's how he I'm wears so his not, opponents I'm down. I'm so looking at fucking Chad Dawson rather, man. He had beat Tarver, Glenn Johnson. Beat Tarver Johnson. twice. He beat Glenn Johnson twice. Damn, yep. they went to, but yeah, I remember when he, I remember um, looking it up when he had fought Andre Ward. Oh, Chad Dawson was a fucking beast, dude. He really was. And then before he ran into Ward, and then he got knocked out against Adonis Stevenson. I mean, and then that that kind of just started like that Roy Jones type tailspin, bro. But Chad Dawson yeah. was the man, dude. He really was. So, but th- that's what I think Canelo's going to do. Benavidez and Plant, bro. How do you think that's going to go? I got Benavidez, but that's a good ass fight, though. I think so, too, because I think um, Plant knocking out a guy like Darrell, who always had a good chin, knocking him out cold like that, and that might be the knockout of the year. Um, I think he's sitting down on his punches now. Plant, and you know, because Plant was always a hit you at the end of my fist type guy, box you. But I think he knows that that was the key to why he didn't beat Canelo because yeah, he was boxing. Okay. Against Canelo, but Canelo kept grinding and coming forward, coming forward because nothing that plant was throwing was threatening. That was keeping Canelo honest. Now the way he knocked Darrell out, I think he's going to, he's going to try to sit down on his punches a little more with Benavidez, but I just think Benavidez is too good for him too. I think Benavidez is going to knock him out, but should be, it's a good matchup. Mm-hmm. I mean, nah, it sucks Benavidez that these fools are finally out. fighting nah. for an interim belt when they could have uh, unified belts years ago, you know? Nah, Benavidez knocks out plan. That's going to be a statement. Oh, big time, bro. He's going to be there. Canelo's going to have to be like, Hey, by the end of the year, if Canelo beats Bivol, Canelo's going to have to fight Benavidez and 
early 2024 or he's going to have to vacate, bro. That's just, there's, there's nothing else to say, you know? So. Oh yeah. That'll be, a, I mean, Benavidez be playing. He, if Benavidez be playing, everybody, you know what the fight everybody going to be calling for. Yeah, they have to. And, and you know, and maybe Benavidez can keep himself, uh, keep himself active. Maybe Charlo or, or Andre finally grow some fucking balls and we'll fight him. Or Morel, but you know he, he, that might be taking too much of a risk for for him then. But um, you know we'll 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 see. But a uh, couple other guys, Daniel Jacobs. Do you think he's gonna make a comeback? I don't know, man. Ever since he married that actress, bro, he just doesn't um, seem interested in boxing anymore. I really, I really can, I really can see Daniel Jacobs and, and Eric Berlingo facing each other. Yeah, that would be interesting. From, yeah, they both from New York. It'll sell. Yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting. I, I didn't think about that one. It would be interesting. So, and uh, I think that's pretty much it, man. I don't really think there's much else to say. Uh, you know, I, I liked the Shishkin's win over Ustadagi, um uh, a couple hey, weeks Shinsuke, back. I was, that's the Shishkin dude, I think he might face Maria next. Yeah. Yeah, he might because they're both PBC, bro. So, um, yeah, so. I think we're good at 168 now. So the last division, and people might not consider heavyweights the best division in boxing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's definitely one of the top two or three, but I love the heavyweight division, bro. I grew up on Tyson and Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, and I still think the heavyweights are great, dude. There's so many good names at heavyweight. Oh, and, yeah, um, heavy, I, I, I've said this before. This, this is actually a good era of heavyweight. The only problem is – majority of them haven't fought each other. Yeah, yeah, but but that's the thing is you got a couple of the dudes that are at the at the end and then you got some really good fucking heavyweights on the rise, bro, and I think a couple of them are going to cross paths, you know, like the older against the newer, but then you're going to have the newer is going to have to fight each other. You know what I'm saying? And there's enough guys to where that's going to happen, bro. So, you know, Tyson Fury Obviously, the top dog. I, I'm so glad, and I hope he sticks to it, that he is going to stay fighting, you know, for as long as he can because it looks like him and Usyk are going to fight. They've already agreed, which means they've already agreed in principle. They're looking for places for the fight. That means they probably have paid off their mandatories, and, and they're going to fight for Undisputed. I think Tyson Fury is just too big for Usyk, so I think he's going to beat him. What do you think? I, I got I, it, that's a fifty fifty fight, but I think Fury gonna get the edge. I got I get Fury the edge. Okay, so if that happens, um, then you got Wilder and Andy Ruiz, bro. And I, I like Andy Ruiz, but I think Wilder's gonna knock him out, bro. I really do. So, mm, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think Fury, I think Wilder knocks him out in ten. Okay, so here's the scenarios I'm looking at after that. So. Those are the two biggest heavyweight fights that we got on the horizon. Now, every title, bro, at that point, all the mandatories are going to be due. So um, Deontay would be in line to fight for the WBC. And then Daniel Dubois is the regular champ. They're saying he's probably going to make a mandatory against Michael Hunter next, which I think he beats Michael Hunter. Um, he would be in line for the WBA. Joe Joyce is already the WBO interim champion, so he'd be in line for the WBO. And then Philip Hergovich is the mandatory in the IBF, so he's in line there. I personally think after becoming undisputed, Tyson Fury is not going to give a fuck about holding on to the belts. He's going to look for the biggest opponent. And who's the biggest opponent of those four? A fourth fight with Wilder. Now, I think he's either going to go after a fourth fight with Wilder or a showdown with Anthony Joshua, finally. That's I what I think like he's going to do. I feel like after the Usyk stuff, if he walks over the belt, he it's going to be only three dudes he's looking to make a fight with. That's going to be either Joe George, Anthony Joshua, or, or Wilder. Yeah, that's the thing. Is, is I know he said that he would fight Joe Joyce, but I really think he meant, like, I'll fight him if I don't have any other options. I really think for Fury, if the fight with Usyk is close, then maybe a rematch is one option. Then there's Anthony Joshua too. And I think Deontay Wilder, a fourth fight, bro. I mean, the money that those fools are going to generate, it, it's just, you can't pass it up. You know what I'm saying? And especially after the way the third fight ended, that was a great fucking fight, dude. 
You know, See, that was that was one of those all time heavyweight it, fights. For a while, did he get a third fight with, with for a fourth fight with with the fear he would have to run through Ruiz. And I think he's going to stylistically. I just think he's going to hurt Ruiz early and knock him out and get him out of there. I really don't think Andrew Ruiz is going to pose much of a threat, even though he's a big name, bro. You know, but here's that. That's also the flip side, bro. Let's say Andrew Ruiz pulls out the upset over Wilder, right? Let's say he does. Is he still not the biggest name of the four mandatories, bro? Because he beat Joshua. He's got a huge name. So Fury would be like, yeah, I'll fight the fat boy. Uh, you know that's oh, yeah. what Fury's going to say. If Rui beat, beat Wilder, I can uh, absolutely see Rui versus Fury. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I think is going to go down. Um, if Usyk can pull off the upset, I, th I think he's in the same boat. I think he would rather fight Wilder than fight anybody else. So Wilder is the key, bro. Wilder and Ruiz, the winner of that fight, I think is the in front of the line. Unless, unless the uh, Usyk or Fury wants a huge money fight with Joshua, which Usyk, I don't understand why he'd want to fight Joshua a third time outside of the money. But, I mean, I really think Wilder and Ruiz, the winner of that fight, bro, is in the front of the line to get Fury or Usyk even, you know? So I think that's big, but... Um, uh, Joe Joyce, man, I love the, what that dude is doing and where, where he's going. Like his, 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 um, his arrow is, his star is just rising. And you know, what's funny is the dude's 36 years old, but he's a young 36, you know? And I, I'm just excited to see what he's going to do over the next couple of years. Um, Joseph Parker, you know, he lost to, uh, uh, Joe Joyce, but isn't he, who's he fighting next? Isn't he fighting, um, uh, He's fighting some undefeated guy on the rise, so he's got a chance to throw himself back into it. He's still young. He's only 29. Um, uh, you know, Dillian White's still banging around, you know, and then you got, uh, let me see, Daniel Dubois. I mean, the dude got knocked down three times against Lorena. I think he just got caught off guard and hurt quick. But, I mean, Dubois and Joe Joyce was a fucking burner a couple years ago when they fought, bro. That was a great fight. So, um, the division is definitely on the rise. Heavyweight is definitely, you know, we're going to see some good ass matchups in my opinion in 2023, man. I agree. Yeah. So, um, uh, so that's it, man. We wrapped it up, but, uh, Hey, between me and you, man, just, just let, 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 let's talk. What, uh, what do you think the best division in boxing is overall, bro? What, what, what do you think? Oh, overall, I gotta go to one forty seven. Well, I I can't I can't say you're wrong about that because I really think there's like a like three divisions. I I think it's welterweight, lightweight, and heavyweight no, in I terms of like in terms of deep and of big most, names. I feel like maybe one of the most underrated divisions would probably have to be 154. I think 154 and 140, bro. I think are like the two divisions where you're like, oh shit, they got a lot of good ass fighters there, you know. So yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm with you, man. I personally. In terms of star power and deep, I I think heavyweight because of star power, but also 135 is fucking super deep, dude, in terms of talent, bro. You know, so it's just uh, – I think boxing heading into 2023 because we had like the Crawford and Spence fight really held a, the PBC up. And the PBC has a, a, a big chunk of the big-name fighters – I think that held up the PBC schedule, and I think now it's unavoidable that the PBC, you're going to see most of those top guys fighting twice this year, and I think boxing is just going to is gonna have a really good year, in my opinion, in 2023. I think we're going to see a lot of big fights that we've been wanting to see, and um, and I'm looking forward to it, man. We're going to see some more undisputed. We live, in the, we live in the era of undisputed right now, bro. Everybody wants to be a four belt holder. They want it. They want that credential. So I think we're going to see a couple more undisputed champions in 2023, man. You there, Melly? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, um, brother. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, man, before we wrap it up? No, nah, not too much to add, my guy. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, we're going to come back uh, next, either next week or the week after we're going to hit everybody with our 2022 boxing awards. Uh, me and Melly going to chop it up about those. 
and uh, put our heads together and, and vote on what we think um, were the biggest, you know, just a bunch of different awards, probably about 12 or 13 awards. And it should be pretty good. And then we'll get back to our normal podcast after we do that. But um, I appreciate you guys listening. This was episode 12 of the True Boxing Podcast as we did a recap of 2022 and a preview of 2023. So uh, you guys stay up. Have a good new year. Melly, man, if me and you don't chop it up, bro, have a good new year, man. Be safe out there. And we'll uh, we'll get together in 2023, man. All right, my guy. You, have, you be good. All right, bro. Have a good one, man. I'll see you guys later. True boxing. You've been here with the truth.